one thing that we don't realize is that media has um, a great role to play, but the attention uh, span or the lifespan of a news or a hashtag is very limited. It's uh, and the next disaster hits on the next uh, news affair makes uh, kind of like global agenda top priority and everyone forgets what was being discussed before and that's something that we can't afford to do because we're looking at an emergency, uh, an urgency of situations as climate change is obviously exacerbating, which brings me to my next question, which is, I have this grave concern that climate change, like you know, we talked about, it's not going anywhere. This phenomena is going to repeat itself. In another six months, the monsoon cycle will start developing again. And in an ideal world, uh, Pakistan and likewise countries in the same vulnerable position will have the resources not only to mitigate, adapt, but also to work on the rehabilitation efforts, like you mentioned, the 2.2 million homes being destroyed. And uh, there are great packages. Like, Of course, the government's working well towards um, supporting its, um, its people and its economy, but just the scale that we discuss is so vast that a lot needs to be done. So in an ideal world, there would be enough supporters, mobilization of resources that can cater to both aspects, the adaptation, rehabilitation, and the mitigation, and be ready for uh, the next cycle so history doesn't repeat itself. But unfortunately, we are not in an ideal world right now. Uh, With foresight in mind, uh, do you share the same concern, first of all? And it given, you know, we've talked about heads of states, we've talked about governments, and we've talked a little bit about media. I would also request you to kind of like reflect on the role of civil society organizations, of other multi-stakeholder platforms, um, other sort of like stakeholders that you consider are going to be important, uh, not only to support Pakistan, but countries in similar capacities as we look into climate disasters and the future of uh, climate mitigation and adaptation. Oh, I'm, I, I think... Uh You've touched upon um, a number of very important issues. Uh, you know, I think uh, promoting awareness, uh, uh, overcoming skepticism uh, are really uh, a, a, a significant part of what we can do to deal with and combat uh, uh, the climate change disaster which is frankly staring us in the face, you know. I mean, uh, it has happened uh, in Pakistan, but it will certainly not stay in Pakistan. Right. I think it's very clear and obvious that we are all in it together. Uh, The irony of the situation is that uh, we are in it for no fault of us. You know, this is one disaster uh, where we are not the ones who are responsible, you know for creating conditions, you know. So first of all, all those uh, that are still out there who have some, uh, you know, uh, remaining skepticism on the existence or otherwise of uh, uh, climate change, I think uh, I would invite them to come over to Pakistan and to see for themselves. Because this year alone, I mean, in this decade, we have had 152 extreme climate events, you know. You had uh, floods here in Europe last year. We are having floods uh, and unprecedented ones, never seen before floods in Pakistan this year. Uh, You had uh, extensive uh, forest fires uh, uh, in Europe this year and the last year. We are seeing for the first time forest fires hitting our forests uh, uh, this year. And the pattern may actually pick up in the following years. We have seen glacial lake outbursts, we have seen cloud outbursts, we have experienced temperatures as high as 53.7 degrees Celsius, you know, it's about, I think, around 128 degrees Fahrenheit. So, and then the the shifting monsoon patterns, you know, shifting precipitation patterns, the crops, uh, the need to grow climate resilient crops, you know, all of that is really impacting societies. And obviously, the poorer ones are the most vulnerable ones also. And then Pakistan uh, already being seen actually one of the top 10 most vulnerable countries on account of climate change, despite having contributed or still contributing less than 
actually one uh, percent uh, to uh, global greenhouse gases. So really, so it it's really it, it's a question of uh, solidarity. Uh, it's uh, a question of uh, uh, standing with humanity because. Uh, Yes, it's a question of justice also, but I think without going into the legality of responsibility, it, it's really also a time for everyone to come forward uh, and to stand in solidarity uh, with those who are suffering for no fault of theirs, you know, and, and that's where we create a community. That's where we create uh, a, a well-informed uh, uh, community of uh, individuals and nations, you know. And I think that's where uh, the civil society uh, has a very important role uh, to play because right now the challenge, and I've been part of uh, these climate change negotiations for years, you know, I was uh, myself a climate change negotiator. I've had the privilege of chairing uh, the Group of 77, which is a coalition of 132 countries in the 13th COP in Bali from where the Bali Plan of Action came out and these four pillars of finance, technology, mitigation, and adaptation were basically put forward. So that's where we need to bring all uh, uh, the players. And uh, even in that uh, COP, promises were made, formalized in the Paris Agreement of generating uh, finance to support adaptation uh, uh, in countries that uh, need that kind of financial support. We have not seen those kind of finances uh, coming, uh, uh, being uh, contributed, you know. So I think it's really uh, important to basically increase uh, 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 climate uh, finance uh, to uh, create uh, the mechanisms to operationalize those that are already in place uh, and, and also, I think what is very important right now, and this is something that our delegation uh, will be working hard uh, by, uh, in, in coordination with other like-minded countries, is to bring the whole loss and damage debate uh, to the forefront of uh, climate change uh, discourse uh, multilaterally. Because once we are able to, because as I said in the beginning, that we are all in it together. And we know now on a daily basis that uh, every other day, every other month, every other year, one or the other country suffers that. So we really need to come and join our heads in finding solution and, and finance obviously will be because as I said, looking at uh, the, the extent of uh, damage in Pakistan with 2.2% of our GDP wiped away overnight with almost $30 billion of losses and damage, you know, that that needs to be compensated, that need we need to be helped with, you know, and, and that's where uh, we would hope and expect that, uh, uh, you know, the international community, governments have their own way, they have their own constraints uh, in, in reacting. Uh, civil society, I believe, uh, is, is fair. Uh, civil society uh, is also, I believe, fairer. Uh, because they don't operate with those constraints. And uh, what is good about uh, climate change discourse is that uh, the civil society organizations, uh, even in these formal negotiation processes, also have a role to play. We have a robust component of our civil society represented in our delegation, which would go and attend COP27. We hope that from around the world, civil society uh, you know, representatives would come and sensitize the world about the challenges and, and uh, how to basically uh, meet those challenges. Thank you, Ambassador. And as a proud member of the civil society, I mean, I appreciate the trust uh, that governments uh, in need, especially like that of Pakistan in these tough times, have in civil society organizations and what we can bring to the table. And um, this is part of the effort, right, uh, connecting um, the voice from, from the country and the efforts that are happening in the country that's flood-stricken to the rest of the world and through our networks to everyone who is invested in the idea of climate change and supporting. Um, but w what I heard from you throughout our conversation is strength in numbers, really. 
is how the global community, how different stakeholders, be it the governments, be it the CSOs, be it the think tankers, academics, they come together and uh, they provide knowledge, they raise awareness, they provide sort of like a platform where these issues can be discussed. And so climate finance being one important issue that you kind of like pointed out, the countries like Pakistan and other countries in the global south and equally vulnerable climate positions can be boosted or kind of injected with sort of that climate finance uh, is, is a top priority. Uh, but also what looking forward we need to do as a community is to continue to have more conversations to raise awareness about the different issues because if, when you look at Pakistan flooding, it, we have a lot of water which is detrimental but at the same time it's a country that is water scarce. And water stress is going to rise. And in the spirit of the con conference that we are hosting simultaneously um, in these two days on international hydro diplomacy, bringing attention to the water scarcity issues and transboundary river issues, it's important to highlight how the whole idea of climate is interconnected with water and how it's connected to the other SDGs, whether it's gender, whether it's food, whether it's the idea of providing better living standards and socioeconomic side of things.